Hey guys, I'm Tom with Tech Chap, and I want to show you these three brand spanking new laptops that Acer just unveiled at CES 2023, which I am at currently as you're watching this, but I'm actually recording this in late December because they gave me the chance to have a bit of a sneak peek early look at these guys. We've got the Swift Go, the Swift, and the Swift X. And there were definitely a few surprises. Firstly, they've chucked their old naming conventions out of the window, gone all the old Swift 3, 5, and 7 names. Now we have the new Swift Go, both 14 and 16 options. Uh, and actually, this kind of replaces the old Acer Swift 3. It's a little bit more affordable. It lacks some of the bells and whistles and the fancier designs of these two, particularly this one. But there's tons of options. It can be specced with a nice OLED screen, up to a 13th Gen i7 processor. And so as the cliche goes, I think this is going to be a pretty good all-rounder. The Swift 3 was one of my favorite sort of more mainstream slash budget laptops, although prices have been creeping up in recent years, but I'm excited for this. I think it's going to be a really nice uh, sort of everyday laptop. But then we have the regular Swift, and it's very nice actually. It's kind of like the old Swift 5 with a bit of the luxury of the Swift 7. We've got this nice gold sort of trim around the edge. It's very nice. And actually they managed to squeeze in a full fat H series, so we're talking 45 watt 13th gen Intel processor in here, which is not bad at all given it is pretty slim and light. Very light actually, 1.2 kilograms. So this is like a good travel companion with a surprisingly beefy CPU. But then we also have the Swift X. You can see my very high-end laptop stand going on there. But it foregoes a little bit of the sort of finesse and pizzazz and a bit of the fancy design in favor of, well, more power basically. This can be spec'd with up to an RTX 4050, so a discrete GPU. It's the only one on the Swift lineup to come with a discrete graphics card and also a nice high-res OLED screen with a 120Hz refresh rate as well. And I think for me, this one's a lot more interesting. But importantly, the whole lineup gets 13th gen Intel H series processors, which is impressive. A lot of thin and light laptops still use Intel's P or even U series processors. So to have that 45 watt CPU in here is definitely gonna make a difference to performance. They're also all Intel Evo certified, which means we're getting nice extras like Wi-Fi 6E and Thunderbolt 4. We also get a brand new quad HD camera. So we're looking at a 1440p resolution for the webcam. So all three have a lot to offer, but there is some stiff competition out there from the Dell XPSs to Asus Zenbooks, LG Grams and many others. So let's dive a little bit deeper into each one. And starting with the Swift Go, this will come in both Intel and AMD flavors. As I say, it will be the H series Intel processor, two sizes, 14 and 16 inch, three displays, either a full HD plus touchscreen, a 2.8K touchscreen, or at the top end, a 3.2K OLED 120Hz. We also get new twin air cooling technology, so there are two fans in here keeping everything nice and chill. But I think what I'm most excited about with the Swift Go is the price. I've been told that this should start from about £899. I imagine for the 14-inch i5 Full HD, which isn't exactly cheap, uh, although I think it's fairly comparable to what the old Acer Swift 3s were going for. I think my issue is going to be once you start going up the specs and getting that OLED screen and the i7, I don't think the design and the form factor and everything else is going to sort of keep up with the quality of those specs. But as a more affordable LG Gram alternative, albeit a little bit heavier, not bad. Now as for the regular Swift, and I say regular in the sort of loosest sense, this is not the cheapest, that's gonna be this guy, but it's just the Swift. This comes in two very snazzy colors. I have it in the steam blue, but it also comes in a mist green. And we have this very nice luxury gold trim, as they call it, and also this ocean glass trackpad. Now using it briefly, I did notice the trackpad felt a little bit cheap. I also think they could have maybe put a bigger one in here. And they're still using this magnesium aluminium alloy, which they've been using for a few years. It is a nice looking laptop with these uh, thin bezels. It's sort of a flush glass, but it doesn't exactly blow me away like a Dell XPS 13 Plus. Uh, and it's also got an antimicrobial coating on the Gorilla Glass. How do I know? Because it says right there and you can't actually get rid of that. It's like a printed on logo. It doesn't actually kill bacteria, I should say. It sort of stops it from growing on the screen. It falls off, although it is only on the screen and not anywhere else. I do have one complaint with this. And as I say, this is like a first impression, it's not a full review, but we're still stuck with 60 Hertz, which I think for a premium laptop experience and one that costs or starts from 1400 euros, 60 Hertz is a bit unforgivable in 2023. I also feel like the lack of HDR and the fairly average 425 nit brightness is a little bit run of the mill and particularly for this price, a bit disappointing. But what I will say is I actually appreciate they've made this a little bit thicker uh, than previous laptops to accommodate more ports. And actually we get two Thunderbolt 4s, a full-size HDMI 2.1, two USB-A's, I assume they're 3.2 Gen 2s, as well as a Kensington lock and a headphone jack. So a really good selection of ports, Although an SD card reader would have been nice. So a nice design, doesn't exactly blow me away, but they have crammed in quite a powerful processor into this thin and light laptop. 
And then finally, the one I am most excited about, the Swift X. Now, it's not really much of a looker. In fact, it's probably one of the most boring laptops I've seen in a while, and the slightly protruding plastic bezel does feel a bit cheap. So nothing really to write home about in terms of design, but it's functional. We get all the ports you could throw a stick at, except for full-size SD, just micro SD. It's not a touchscreen, but we do get up to a 120Hz OLED with just a 0.2 millisecond response time. I should also mention that all three are 16 by 10 aspect ratio displays, which I'm very happy to see. So they're a little bit taller, and I think a lot more usable, particularly in the smaller 14 inch sizes. We also get Display HDR True Black 500, so up to 500 nits of brightness, which isn't crazy, but the True Black kind of Display HDR is the best kind. But as I say, only the Swift X has the discrete GPU option, topping out with that 4050, which I am very curious just how fast it's going to be, and also how it compares to a last gen 3050 or even the GTX 1650. Uh, you'll have to wait for my full review on that because I can't benchmark these just yet. And of course, it's not just the new architecture. We do also get DLSS 3, even with the 4050, and that also supports frame generation in the handful of games that support it, which can make a big difference, particularly for the likes of Flight Sim. But certainly if you are going to do any gaming or even a bit of, you know, rendering, 3D modeling or more demanding 4K video editing, then it's the Swift X that you're going to want to keep your eye on. This does also support NVIDIA Studio drivers, which are very similar to your regular game-ready drivers, but they've basically been tested in a lot more professional applications to make sure there's no bugs or issues. If I had my way, I would combine the performance of this, including the sort of beefier cooling and the uh, discrete GPU option, with the design of this, but sadly, that doesn't seem to be an option. So I am excited about these refreshed Swift laptops, but there's still a lot I don't know. File pricing, particularly in the UK, and also how the different SKUs with the different specs will be priced. Also battery life, what kind of an impact will that 4050 and these H series CPUs have in these form factors? Is it gonna kill the battery life? But certainly worth keeping an eye on, and I will update the description and a pinned comment with pricing and availability when I know more, and I'll have my full reviews coming as soon as possible. But what do you reckon? Between the Swift Go, the Swift, and the Swift X, which are you more excited for? or none of the above. Let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be lovely. And I'll see you guys next time right here on The Tech Chat.